evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. The first thing I'm going to say is, when I began my first term three and a half years ago as a city council representative, I stated over and over many times that I am not a public speaker. I am here to report to you three and a half years in. I still am not a public speaker. I liken myself more to uh, the model of a workhorse and not a show horse. If you want to talk about the best speaker, who's up for show and who does it the best, I'm not your person. If you want to talk about someone who's in the trenches that has been working for the city of Valdosta, specifically for District 2, but citywide, then I have some things I would like to share with you. First of all, I can uh, want to share with you that, you know, as a young girl growing up in the South, especially a girl that grows up in church your whole life, what are the things that we are taught? Be modest, don't boast, do your good deeds in private and, you know, not flaunt them for everyone to see. As young girls and church members, this is what we're taught. And that works great for a church girl. It does not work well at all for an elected official because people want to hear from you and they want to know what's going on. And um, someone has told me over the past couple of years, if I don't tell what I've done and accomplished, then I have to find someone who will because people need to know. So if you will bear with me, I want to share a few successes for my first three and a half years in my first term. I am your incumbent seeking re-election this November for District 2 for the city of Valdosta. Some successes that I can name are, um, who remembers biomass? Holy cow. Lots of activism, lots of community response, and I will tell you that from my position, I was against biomass and made that known. Um, school consolidation, another big occurrence during my time. Again, we have an elected school board. I personally do not feel that when there is another elected body who is charged with ruling on issues that I try to stay in my lane for in my area, okay? You elected people for the school board, so I did not come out on front in that issue, but I can assure you that much work was done from the position where each of us sat. And good, good turnout, I might, I might add. So we were all happy with the turnout. As far as money into District 2, um, after the first retreat of my first uh, council year, I received a message from a former, very beloved councilman for District 2, and he said, I don't know how you did it, but you're doing a great job. I saw the list for sidewalk money, and whatever you're doing, you need to keep it up. District 2 needs that, so keep doing what you're doing. That meant a lot to me, and I took that as a good sign that I was off to a good start, and I have continued to, I think if we look at the numbers, District 2 has received more, probably, funding into um, its area than in times in the past, and I'm very proud of that. It did not come to me, I assure you, because I have five other councilmen well qualified councilmen who have more experience than I do also vying for the same dollars for their districts and so the good news is is that um, the city does a good job at trying to equally disperse and be equitable over the entire city but for that little bit of extra you just really have to get in there and fight for your district board and I'm, I think I've done a good job for district 2 and that the numbers will show that another thing that I am proud of and Representative Sharper let me say publicly that absolutely my opinion is that the right person is in District 177 and hats off to you and I will call on you for a minute if you don't mind. Um, some ways that I am also active as your council rep for District 2 is I do reach out to our state representatives. Specifically this year I talked with all of our representatives regarding a broadband bill that was brought up cell phone tower bill that was brought up, all of which I feel like would have been damaging to our area. I'm not going to spend time explaining what they were, but those bills were ultimately defeated at the um, state, and I was in favor of it, and I did reach out, and I stay in contact with our representatives at the state and at our federal um, legislature as well. I think that it's important to remember that, well, for, let me back up. Your city council representatives are nonpartisan. So I understand this is the Democratic barbecue and where it's all Democrat all the time in this particular setting. But from a city council position, 
I represent everyone, regardless of their political affiliation, regardless of their economic stature, regardless male or female, Catholic, Protestant, you get the picture, someone to be a voice for everyone in your area, and that's what city council does. So the point I wanted to add to that is it is imperative that whomever our representatives are, that your local representative is able to build relationships, which many of our other speakers have alluded to, to be able to successfully represent our district. Um, I will say and stand with anyone else that I feel that I have done a tremendous job at building relationships at every level of, that affects our, us here locally, governmentally. Um, I do not agree with everything that every other representative does, just like I'm sure everyone doesn't agree with everything that I do. But when your intention is to do the, your best and you have your community at heart and what's best for your community to the best of your ability, I feel like that that should go, that should count for a lot. And I promise you that that is why I'm standing here today. It is not an easy job. When you set yourself up and uh, cross over to being an elected official, as you all know, you are immediately a target because once you make a decision, then someone's going to be happy and someone is going to be unhappy. And it's just the nature of what you put yourself in. Uh, the situ uh, I'm sorry, the situation you put yourself in when you decide to run for elected office. It is not always easy, but it is something that if you care about your community, you keep getting back on that horse and keep getting back on the horse. And when you think, why in the world am I putting myself in this position, you keep getting back up on that horse. And I'm happy to be here and do it. It is challenging, but it has been rewarding. Um, other successes along the way. Um, SPLOS did not pass in this last go around. And for whatever reason, it passed in every precinct in the city, but did not pass in the county. And this is not at all a city county comment that I am making because in my mind, we are one community and that's, we're all working together. But SPLOS is an issue that uh, did failed the last time around, but is a good example of what city council representatives help, um, help to do in our community. Tifton, our neighboring city, has just announced that they are raising their property tax three mills. And someone in the audience said that, that they recall reading that that's going to equal about 40, a 44% increase for those citizens. I'm not familiar with what the Tifton millage is. I just know they're raising it three mils. I'm sure you can look it up. Okay. A couple of years ago, they ended their benefit pack, benefits package, and currently they're losing police officers as a result. So that is an example, and this is not a, de a derogatory against Tifton. It's just an example of a town just right up the road from us. The city of Valdosta has just balanced its budget, and it includes a balanced budget. It includes a pay raise, a cost of living raise for city employees. Many of you may have already read this in the media. And it includes no furloughs. Everything is remaining intact with no property tax or no, no increases um, to the citizens. That is an amazing feat that your city staff and officials have worked out. But I will tell you, it has not been easy. But many positions are not being filled, and it has been trimmed as trim to the bone as practically we can get it. Without some sort of increase in revenue, hopefully times will turn tomorrow and lots of people will come and buy things in Valdosta and good times will be rolling again. But until then, your city and your representatives have tightened their belt as closely as possible while still trying trying to care for our people who do great work and to not pass any of that burden on to our citizens. And that, to me, is a big um, accomplishment that should get some, some goodwill back toward it. Everyone worked hard to make that happen. Um, Gretchen, you mentioned about one of the programs that Mayor Register started about the work camp, and that did just finish last week, and it's been an honor to be a part of that for the past, this is my fourth time. And I wanted to tell you that in eight years, 270 houses have been repaired from those youth groups coming to our city. So that's another great accomplishment that goes on in your city every year that many people are not aware of. 
Um, what does a city council representative do and what can we do? When I went into service three and a half years ago, I really did not know the extent of what it included. I kind of jumped into the deep end of the ocean as a willing uh, person ready to serve in any way that I could. And I have learned a lot in three and a half years at what the scope of being a city council representative means. And for me, three and a half years later, what it means is I represent my constituency to the best of my ability and do my best for the city and to make our lives uh, a better quality of life um, that covers every area that we all experience and we all know that life is challenging enough without issues amongst our local government. One thing though that has come up, today is one of those days and so now I'm going to close with what little bit of scribbling notes that I made when I got here and I'm going to talk to you just from the heart. Did anyone read the paper today? Yes. Okay. How about last week, the first article? Okay. As a city council representative for District 2, I ride around the area. I mean, I ride around the whole city, but obviously my primary commitment is to the people who elected me to try to work to the best of my ability for our area. And there has been a homeless encampment under the James Bay overpass for some time. I'm sure you all have read, maybe read about it if you have not witnessed it yourself. In the past several months, it has uh, began to grow um, and deteriorate rather rapidly. Now, if you're not in that area, which let's face it, the majority of citizens in this community have no reason to drive under the overpass. Um, that is one of our almost forgotten areas of town that I work very hard and have worked and has, we have had some success and are knocking on the door of great success for business redevelopment in that area of town. And I'm very proud of that. I wish I could give a big announcement today, but it's premature, but we're knocking on the door of seeing real renovation of the South Side. But the situation with the homeless camp, the residents of my area have been dealing with for quite some time with seemingly no solution in sight. So I contacted many people in the community, homeless advocates, churches, governmental, civil, nonprofits, anyone that I've ever come across that has worked um, in any capacity regarding uh, helping with the homeless situation. And in a very almost seemingly the stars all lined up a couple of weeks ago many people came together to try and do something about the specific 11 homeless persons who were living under the james bay overpass a private citizen donated property and said we could, they can stay on this property for a temporary time until we find a permanent solution Members of the Homeless Coalition immediately began identifying potential employers. Um, I'm sure you read about this in the paper, so I'll try not to re repeat it all. Um, other individuals committed, they're going to bring food every day to the location. Other commitments were made to help with um, personal facilities that were not available at the overpass. And to my surprise, there has been some criticism publicly about all this effort that was um, put forth in, in regard to one, the residents of the South Side, and uh, two, to the homeless persons in particular. And so what I want to report to you today, and this is an example of what I do, and again, forgive me because I'm not the speaker, not the show horse, the workhorse. As of today, regarding the temporary voluntary location. Four of the 11 homeless persons were helped within 48 hours and moved to permanent locations. Two now have jobs. Three were found permanent location, three more were found permanent locations, and only four remain and are scheduled to be relocated before, I believe by tomorrow is the deadline. Now, Homelessness is an issue all over our nation. We all know this. And lots of times it's out of sight, it's out of mind. And I want to tell you, it is not the responsibility or the 
within the scope of a local government to take this on. This is an issue that we as citizens, that our churches, that nonprofits, that every one of this, this is our issue. It is not our local government's responsibility. It's impossible for the government to take this on, in my opinion. I don't think that's the place. It's the place of caring community members like ourselves. So on behalf of these 11 homeless persons who were relocated and who have now been positioned to improve their situation greatly, their position was immediately improved by the donation of tents to sleep in instead of just out on the ground. Um, if you want to speak with me about it later, I will be happy to, but the point that I want to make specifically is your city council representatives are here to be the voice for our little area and you listen to your constituents and you do do the best of your ability to represent them and what their needs are. And I will not say this bragging, but I will say it unequivocally, I'll put my record as the representative for District 2 up against anyone else that has come before me. That's not bragging, it just, I feel very strongly that I have worked very hard for this district and I will continue to. Some folks had asked me some questions about the particular homeless issue earlier and I will be happy to take any questions if that is appropriate at this time. Okay, Gretchen says after. So anyone with any questions, I will be happy to answer. I have been very honored and proud to be the representative for District 2. And although it is not easy every day, and many things have been said about me that tear my heart in two. Um, when you make decisions where some agree and some disagree, sometimes people can be very brutal and very personal with their responses. I wish that we were not like that, but unfortunately that apparently is a part of it as well. But I am here to tell you that, um, thank goodness, I'm not too weak-hearted, although I am tender. And I'm here to serve to the best of my ability for another term, and it would be my honor. Um, if there's anything that I can do for you, please let me know. I'm always available. And... Thank you for the time and this opportunity to speak to you tonight.